name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I greet all of you with the feast day of Archangel Gabriel, and as you probably know, we moved the celebration of the parish from Annunciation's feast day in the middle of Great Lent to the July day, so that the, we could more festively celebrate the feast, and it wouldn't be like a, a fasting day. Today we also have the, the Feast of St. Vladimir in Nightmare of Russia and the Holy Fathers of the first six ecumenical councils. And first of all, I want to speak about the Gospel reading today. So the Gospel story of the healing of the paralytic. And this was the Gospel of Matthew, but there was the same story is in the Gospel of Mark and St. Mark describes it more, more extensively, describing how the, the man was lowered to the rooftop of the house where Christ was speaking. And there were so many people listening to the words of our Savior that they could not in, enter into the house. So they lowered the, the man to the rooftop. They took off the tiles of the roof. And this man, this paralytic, was obviously seeking to be healed. And our Savior, instead of healing him right away, his first words were, Thy sins are forgiven. And he was probably wondering why he wasn't being healed, and everyone else was wondering what's, what is happening. And the Pharisees were judging our Savior, saying that, how can this man forgive sins? He is, he is not God. And in order to show the Pharisees that he had, did have the power to forgive sins, he healed the man of his paralysis and took him to, told him to take up his bed and walk. But for us, it's a clear indication of what is more important. The more important thing was the healing of the man's soul. For this man was not only physically paralyzed, he was spiritually paralyzed. And he did not have the power to move. And first of all, we see that this was because of his sins. Our Savior told him that his sins were forgiven and indicating that this was the source of his sickness and also showing us how important it is not that our physical ailments be cured, but that our spiritual ailments be cured. And for this, we have the sacrament of confession. And how many of us take advantage or realize what an important thing this is? to be healed spiritually. We go about our daily lives not thinking about the state of our soul, not thinking about what is happening, whether we are spiritually paralyzed or not, but we think about our physical ailments much more. We do not think about how to get rid of our passions. Instead, unfortunately, we often think about how we can feed our passions, how we can satisfy our sins, our sinful desires. We do not think about how our sinful desires, our passions, are separating us from our Savior, separating us from God. We do not think about drawing closer to God. We only think about earthly things instead of spiritual things. And we see in the story of St. Vladimir, the enlightener of Russia, how when he drew, tried to draw near to the Christian faith, when he wanted to become a Christian, not realizing exactly what he was doing, not realizing the importance of it, he, he tried to conquer Constantinople in order to, to have them sue for peace, and in this way he, he arranged that he could become a Christian. But God humbled him, 
God showed him what is more important. Saint Vladimir, before his baptism, was made blind, powerless, and it's for a ruler of that time, this was extremely humbling. How could a blind man rule a country? And still he prepared to receive baptism. He was, he was prepared by priests and taught the Christian faith. And in hum his humility, he was able to receive their teachings. He was able to understand them by being humbled. And when he was baptized, not only was he healed physically, but he was healed spiritually. He understood the importance of everything. And reportedly, when he came out of the baptismal font, he said, now I have seen the true God. And little by little, he tried to spread the truth of this true God, this true religion, throughout the Russian land. And as we know, this was not easy. Some cities accepted it willfully, willingly, and some were not so willing to accept the faith. And it took years of missionary work in order for them to turn away from paganism and receive the true light. Let us all think about our own lives, whether we have really accepted the true light into our hearts, whether we have really changed ourselves, whether we have become healed, whether we now see, whether we are still par paralyzed spiritually, or whether we are changing our lives now that we have become Christians. Sometimes there is one sin which bothers the person, which prevents them from making any progress in his spiritual life. And sometimes we don't even struggle against this sin, which makes it even worse. This becomes a roadblock in our spiritual progress. And perhaps people even confess this sin half-heartedly, more, more or less like informing the priest of their sins without really repenting, without really trying to change, without really trying to change their heart. And this is what we need to do as Christians. We need to have a change of heart. We don't, we don't just change our lifestyle. We start fasting perhaps on certain days of the week. We start going to church once in a while. We have to have a change of heart where we try to live a godly life, where we try to live according to the gospel, not living, trying to fit somehow the gospel teachings into our life where it's more, most convenient, but going on with our worldly life as it was before. We have to try and, and change our life completely conforming to the gospel according, conforming it to the teachings of the church. And only this way will we truly become Christians. Otherwise, we will still be spiritually blind, spiritually paralyzed, having some sins which are blocking our path into the kingdom of heaven. Let us think about the words of the divine liturgy if we say after communion each time, let us say them heartfeltly. Let us feel what we are saying. Let us acknowledge when we say, we have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. We worship the undivided trinity, for it has saved us. Amen.